Graham Gano, two for two, long of 44, 100% on extra points. You know, I, I keep expecting him to have his miss, you know, because that's kind of how it works. Like right when you right when you don't need a miss, you know, it's never like the first drive. It's always like close ball game, you know, and the guy's been perfect all year. And it's like, this is the one that we really, 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 really need. And they miss it. And, and uh, he came through both times. And uh, he signed a three-year extension, 14 mil, I think it was. And you're like, Graham Gano, he's going to go he's gonna go to the Pro Bowl. We signed him to an extension. He's looking great. And then he gets COVID. <laughs> it's like, thank God we have a bye week. Because I, I did not know what our backup plan was. I, I, almost put, I almost tweeted out, like, all gas, no field goals, no extra points. It's just going to be Madden style. We're going to go for two every time. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to go for, go for it on fourth down every time in enemy territory. Like it's just going to be like high school football basically. But apparently we've had this dude on our practice squad, Ryan Santoso. Uh, Joe Judge expressed confidence in Ryan Santoso if Gano isn't ready for the Bengals game, which he, it's tough. It's going to be tight because I think they announced the extension either Sunday after the game maybe or Monday and then like Monday or Tuesday they were like yeah he's got COVID so there's going to be you know typically you'd have to 14 days of quarantine but this is like professional sports multi-billion dollar organization so they're like well if you we're just going to test the shit out of you and if you have a bunch of negative tests in a row then you're good to go it's like all right wish I could do that um so Santoso if Cano if Cano can't go Love Ryan Santoso. Dude is 6'5", 258 pounds. We have like a tight end on the practice squad who's like smaller than that. Uh, he's an undrafted free agent out of Minnesota, University of Minnesota, Golden Gophers. And uh, he was a kicker, freshman, sophomore year in college, and then became a punter junior and senior year. So it's kind of like, mm, and now he's a kicker again? What's going on? He became Minnesota's kicker in 2014 and had a poor 12 of 18, so two-thirds uh, success rate for field goals, um, but went 45, 46 in extra points. Of course, extra points in college, not the same as NFL. High point of his season then was a 52-yard field goal to beat Purdue. 2015, his field goal numbers improved, 17 of 21, which is around 81%, and a game-winning field goal in overtime against Colorado State. Perfect 32 for 32 and extra points. And then he became a punter. So it's like, okay. And he averaged, he had the fourth best average in school history, punting. 46 punts inside the 20, with the career long of 68 yards. So I watched, uh, he spent, he was signed by the Lions and waved. Didn't see any time. Went to the Alouettes, signed to the practice squad. Didn't see any kicks. I guess he maybe he's a punter on the practice roster. Went to the Titans and was a kickoff specialist in three games in 2019 last year, and then went back to the Alouettes, but the Alouettes season was canceled. So, but Joe Judge must see something in him. And I would have think that gold, like uh, Carter Coughlin might have something to say about this since he was, a, he was at Minnesota at the same time as Santoso. Maybe, you know, I don't know if Chris Williamson is on the practice squad still, but he was a golden gopher. So maybe he said he could vouch for Santoso. Kind of odd that he's moved to punter in college, but maybe that maybe that's like the coaching staff in college just not seeing his potential or not being able to coach him up. I watched his pro day from 2018 on YouTube. Dude is a strong leg. He is not accurate though. Looked like he was drawing. I mean, this was in a bubble indoors on the turf and he was kind of hooking a lot. Hooking, hooking, hooking. I think he hit one uh, to the right, missing. So he's not, incredibly accurate but god damn he has a strong leg <laughs> he was hitting from 60 plus yards no problem yeah and yeah on turf indoors no pads no rush perfect hold because it's just the little t thing so i get it but it's a little encouraging to see you know that if we get into that situation where it's a 50 plus yard field goal that judge would have confidence in him to to put it through Riley Dixon, four punts with a 53.3 average, and that's due to his long of 71. Four punts inside the 20. Now, Gano, I got to think, has got to be guaranteed pro bowler. He's like leading the league in field goals made. Riley Dixon should be a pro bowler. I mean, the, the number of punts he's put inside the 20. Every single punt he had on Sunday was inside the 20. And that 71-yard punt was 
I don't want to say a game changer, but goddamn, definitely helped us out a lot to boom the ball and to get inside the 20 when we were back up. We were not like close to midfield. I mean, this is something he had to put a lot of effort into it. And the fact that you can, you can launch a rocket like that and still have it come down inside the 20, just amazing. Uh, Trebill Peppers, yet another game returning punts. Should have had a touchdown, and Judge broke this down, the Judge report. You know, he had a choice, just like Deion Lewis had a choice, I guess, against the Redskins the previous week, where it's like he could have cut it outside, and he probably would have scored, but he decided to kind of cut it up and go vertical, and he ended up running into Cam Brown, who probably was not expecting to get his ass rammed in by Andrew Bro Peppers, but still a good, you know, 20-yard return. That put us in really good op- uh, scoring opportunity. I think we got a field goal out of it, but goddamn, I would love to see Peppers return a nice kick for a touchdown. A, but B, I'd like to see one of these deep kicks that get into enemy territory result in six instead of three. 